Hey guys, good afternoon. I uh, wanted to do a video on rapid spanning tree protocol. What is it? What does it do? Uh, it's 802.1w uh, compared to STP. STP is 802.1d. And um, so what does rapid spanning tree do? So uh, in a network, you want redundancy. Redundancy means you have a backup connection to your primary connection. So if one connection goes down, another connection will pick up the slack. That's redundancy. And a good network has redundancy. However, the bad thing about redundancy is you can cause loops in your network. And the way that happens is right now I have classic spanning tree running. It's uh, running by default. So you can see on switch 2, fast ethernet 2 is blocking, right? Um, so if I didn't have spanning tree protocol, if I didn't have rapid spanning tree protocol, that port would be forwarding. So if switch 0 receives a broadcast frame, it forwards it out all ports and it goes to switch 2 and switch 1 and then switch two and switch one receive a broadcast frame and they broadcast the message out all ports. And that just continues to happen over and over and over and over again. And then you have a loop of your data and that loop can cause latency. That loop can cause what's called a broadcast storm where you're, uh, the, the, there's, it's just flooded with so much data that your network goes down and you lose connectivity altogether. Um, so that's why we have spanning tree to block redundant ports so that there's one path and if that path goes down, spanning tree will converge and make a new path for your data. So uh, let's, let's show you how that works. So I'm going to show you the convergence time for classic spanning tree. So we're going to go to PC2, go to the desktop, and we're going to ping. What I want to do is I want to ping PC2 to PC1 because there's one clear path here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down the interface of switch one, fast ethernet zero slash two, I'm gonna shut down that interface and then I'm gonna wait for spanning tree, classic spanning tree, to converge paths and then see how long it takes for it to re-enable connection. So we're gonna ping dash T 192.168.1.3 and you can see we have connectivity and it's gonna to continue to ping. And then we're gonna to go to switch one. Let's get this back up there. And then we're gonna to go to switch one and I'm going to terminate the connection. So global configuration mode, go into the interface, interface fast ethernet zero slash two, shut down. Now watch, when I hit shut down, the pings will stop, the connectivity will stop, and then we're waiting for the convergence to happen. So shut down, you see the links go red, the status goes down, the pings have stopped, and now we're waiting. And, the re and it's going to take a while. And the reason why it's going to take a while is because classic spanning tree has several states it has to go through. The max age timer of classic spanning tree is 20 seconds. So uh, if switch one doesn't receive any hello messages from switch zero for 20 seconds, then there, there needs to be some convergence made. Um, so 20 seconds goes by, and then you have two other states that the ports have to go through. They have to go through a learn, a listening state and a learning state. And those two states are 15 seconds apiece. So 20 plus 30 is 50 seconds. So we're waiting 50 seconds to get our connection back. That's a lot of data. So there we go. Just now, the connection just started again and the convergence happened. So before, you saw on switch 2, fast ethernet 0 slash 2 was blocked because it's a redundant port. This link went down. So then the convergence happened and the path switched, it, it converged and the paths changed to go through switch two to switch one and then to PC one. So uh, that's the convergence time for classic spanning tree. And we're gonna do it for rapid spanning tree as well. So we're gonna do a control C to cancel the pings, close that out. And then we're gonna turn the interface back on, no shutdown and the interface is back on. So the way rapid spanning tree works is all the switches in the network uh, will perform what's called an election. And the switch with the lowest priority will become the root bridge. The root bridge uh, has designated ports. What I mean by that is they are forwarding ports uh, on all interfaces will be forwarding on a, on a root bridge. Whereas on a non-root bridge, you could have some blocked ports. So um, yeah, so uh, the lowest priority becomes the root bridge. And then the default priority for all these switches is 32,768. So if all these switches have the same priority, how do they determine who the root bridge is? The next criteria is lowest MAC address. So first, lowest priority, and then lowest MAC address. 
So let's uh, establish rapid spanning tree on our switches because right now we're running classic spanning tree. And we're going to go into switch zero and we're going to go spanning dash tree mode rapid dash PVST. And what can we choose from? PVST or rapid PVST? All right, so we've turned on rapid spanning tree on switch zero. And the next thing we need to do is establish the priority. So spanning dash tree, there's two ways to do it. Spanning dash tree VLAN one because it's PVST means per VLAN spanning tree. So we have to do it per the VLAN. So spanning dash tree VLAN one, and then we could type in priority and then a number between zero and 61,440. That has to be in increments of 4,096. So let's say you don't know the increments of 4,096. Well, I'll just type in one, hit enter, and then it's going to say, hey, that's not a prior, that's not an increment of 4,096. Let me help you out. Here are the increments of 4,096. And then it shows you the increments. So you can just copy off of that. But let's say you don't want to do that. Let's say you just want switch zero to be the root bridge. That's all you care about. You don't want to set the priority. Just let's do it that way. So there is a command for that. And it is spanning dash tree VLAN one per, right, per VLAN. And then we'll type in root primary. And what that does is it sets switch zero's priority low, lower than the default priority of switch two and switch one automatically. So you don't have to set the priority manually. So right now, as of right now, switch zero will be the root bridge. Um, so let's go to switch one. And we'll go, go into global configuration mode, spanning dash tree mode rapid dash PVST. And that turns on rapid spanning tree. And then we're going to set the priority. Now, what I want is I want this switch to be the secondary root bridge. And I can do that by typing in this command, spanning dash tree VLAN one root secondary. And I've set switch one to be the secondary root bridge. So if switch zero goes down, switch one will take over. All right, let's go to switch two. And on switch two, all we have to do is establish rapid spanning tree. So go into global configuration mode, spanning dash tree mode, rapid dash PBST. All right, so let's check out our configurations before we do anything. So we're gonna go back to switch zero, do show spanning dash tree. All right, uh, so here we are. Uh, we're in VLAN one, spanning tree protocol enabled is RSTP. The root ID, this information right here in this section where it says root ID, this is the root bridges information. The root bridges priority, the root bridges MAC address. The bridge ID, this is the information of the current switch you're configuring. So it, you can see it's the same, same exact thing because uh, we're, we're on the root bridge and we're configuring the root bridge. So we have the same information on both sections. Down here we have the interface. On each interface, it tells us what the role is. So for rapid spanning tree protocol, uh, you have different roles than spanning tree protocol. On rapid spanning tree protocol, you have a designated port, which is a forwarding port. And all ports on the root bridge are designated ports, which means they're forwarding. Then you have an alternative port, which is a discarding port. Um, by discarding, I mean blocking but it's called discarding in rapid spanning tree protocol. And an alternative port is a backup to the root port. And the root port is the port you take to get to the root bridge. Um, so on the root bridge, we don't have any root ports because it's not the port to the root bridge. We have designated ports. Um, then you have backup ports. And a backup port is a backup, uh, it's a backup designated port to a switch, not a root bridge. So that's, that's the important difference between the two. And then you also have an edge port. An edge port is a port that goes directly to an edge device, like a PC. Um, and that would be like, for example, fast ethernet zero slash three would be like an edge port. Then what you have is the cost. So if you look over here, um, you have my little cost table. All these interfaces are a fast ethernet link. So fast ethernet is 100 megabits per second. The cost is 19. Um, and it's important, the cost is important because that's how it decides what link or what port is blocking and what is forwarding. So a 
lower costing port will be a designated port or a root port, and then a higher costing port will be a alternate port or a backup port, also known as discarding ports. So the three types of port states are forwarding, which is designated and root. Then you have a learning state, which is is a it's kind of a, the it's like a blocking um, state, but it's learning MAC addresses. And then you have a discarding state, which is an alternative port or a backup port, and those are considered discarding. So yeah, um, so that's that. Let's check out switch two because switch two looks like it's blocking. So let's check it out. So we'll do a do show spanning dash tree. And uh, as you can see here, the root ID, the root ID is the root bridges information, right? This is the root bridges, priority, address, cost, all that good stuff. The bridge ID is the switch that you're configuring that switches information. Um, so here we go, we have our interfaces and our roles. And on one of our roles, we have our root port. Uh, for fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 is a root port. Why? Because the root port goes to the root bridge. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 goes directly to the root bridge. It's the root port. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 3 is designated in forwarding because it's an edge port. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 is in a blocking state. You see the block? And the role is alternative. What does alternative mean? Alternative means it's a backup root port. So in case Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 goes down, Fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 will pick up the slack and become the root port, which the root port goes to the root bridge. So that's that. Um, and that's our show command. So let's do our test, all right? So we'll go to PC2, and we'll type in the same thing, ping dash T 192.168.1.3, and we have connectivity, and I want to see the convergence time of rapid spanning tree protocol. So we'll go to switch one, go to switch one, and we're going to shut off the interface. So interface, fast easy user slash two, we're going to shut off, right now the path to PC1 is a direct line. And we're going to shut that link off and we're going to see how RSTP reacts. How does it converge? How quick is it? We're going to see. So we're going to do a shutdown. Now get ready to watch. Ready? All right, link's down, status is down, pings have stopped. How long does it take? Request timed out, boom. And we're back in business. Just seconds. Um, so the way that works is with... STP, you have a max age timer 20 seconds, then you have two forwarding states 15 seconds apiece. Whereas rapid spanning tree, you have a hello timer of two seconds, and your max age timer is three times your hello timer. So that's a six seconds max age timer. So in six seconds, we should have a reconvergence, and that's exactly what we saw very quick. Um, so yeah, that's rapid spanning tree protocol. And let me show you two more commands. Um, that you may need. So control C, close out of that. And then I'm going to turn the interface back on. No shutdown. All right, so the other two I want to do, we're going to switch zero. All right, and we're going to go into the interface. So I want to show you port fast and BPDU guard. So we're going to go, oops, global configuration mode interface, fast Ethernet 0 slash 3 because it's a um, an edge port. And we're going to set to switch port mode access. So in order to set a port to port fast, that port must be an access port. It cannot be a trunk port. So we're going to set it to access and then we're going to type in spanning dash tree port fast. And it's going to give us a warning. Hey, do not enable port fast on this kind of a connection, that kind of a connection, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then uh, it'll only have the effect when port fast will only have the effect when the interface is in a non-trunking mode, which we're in an access mode, so we do have port fast running. So the next command I want to show, and what port fast does is it skips all states and it goes directly to forwarding. So fast Ethernet 0 slash 3 is going to an edge device, it's not going to a switch, so we can have port fast set on that port. And then the next command is spanning dash tree, BPDU guard, enable. What I, oh, I typed it wrong. B, BPDU guard with the G. Enable. And what BPDU guard does is we set it on port fast Ethernet 0 slash 3. And if this connection receives a BPDU, a bridge protocol data unit, which is like a hello message from a switch, if it receives a BPDU on this interface, that interface will automatically shut down. So if somebody just adds a switch to the network, we'll, we'll cancel that connection. 
Um, so when you're planning to set devices in your network, you don't want to just place a switch here or there. You don't want to create a loop. And that's what BPDU Guard essentially stops, is if you just add a switch to the network, you won't create a loop and knock down your network. Um, instead, you have to plan it out and say, okay, I have BPDU Guard, let's set up the switch, let's make sure everything's set up correctly, let's set up RSTP, and then, um, and then we can bring the switch online and there won't be any loops. So that's RSTP. I hope this was helpful.